Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McCray. A new study from the U.S. Department of Agriculture found that when it comes to washing our hands before meals, well, we're not doing a very good job. Uh Uh-oh. In a recent observational study, consumers failed to properly clean their hands 97% of the time. Rinsing. (laughs) Not so good. No, rushing through hand washing can lead to cross-contamination of food and other surfaces, resulting in foodborne illnesses. Joining us on the phone to discuss is the Deputy Undersecretary for Food Safety at the USDA, Carmen Rottenberg. Welcome to the program, Ms. Rottenberg. Thanks so much for having me. Carmen, thanks so much. So uh, I guess it's fairly clear we're not doing a very good job of washing our hands before we eat. Yes, that's right. Uh, Washing hands before preparing food and then also uh, washing hands after touching raw meat, which is what we found in in a significant number of instances when participants in this study had an opportunity to wash their hands. They did not. Yeah, that 97% of the time number leads me to believe that perhaps I've not done it correctly all of this time. So how do you how do you perform this study? Uh, So actually, we have a five-year study where we are focusing on the different meal uh, food safety behavior steps. I'm going to try that again. Um, We have a five-year study where we are focusing on the four different food safety behaviors, clean, separate, cook, and chill. Clean meaning do you wash your hands and surfaces before preparing food uh, and while you're preparing to ensure that you're not cross-contaminating. Separating to make sure that you're keeping raw meat and poultry separate from your fresh fruits and vegetables and other ready-to-eat foods. Cook, are you cooking your foods to the proper internal temperature? And then chill, are you safely storing the foods after you have consumed them, after you've served them? to your to to your um, household and so this particular meal preparation experiment focused on the food safety behavior of cook actually specifically whether participants were using a food thermometer to check the doneness of the turkey patties and whether the patties were cooked to the recommended uh, internal temperature Uh, what we found in fact is that in addition to not using a food thermometer when they had access to it in 97 percent of the time consumers also didn't wash their hands at points when they should have meaning they either didn't wash them or didn't wash them effectively before they started preparing the food or uh, the same was true after they touched the raw meat. Um, Did they know you were watching them? (laughs) They did know that we were watching them, but they didn't know that we were watching them for food safety behaviors. So the participants in the study were invited to participate in the study um, in order to test new recipes. That's the hook that we used Uh to get them in. And we conducted this experiment in both urban and rural settings. Um, And... We did inform the participants once the study was done that they, this was actually a food safety study uh, and and not a recipe uh, study. I've got. To, I'm very <laughs> curious, and I think I know the answer. But uh, who fared better, the urban or the rural? It actually didn't make a big difference. Really? The two. Wow! No, we, we, I grew up on the farm, and when I go home, I'm like, oh my gosh, what was I doing? <laughs> yeah. No, it didn't. It didn't make as big a difference as I would have expected either. I think a really big takeaway is that consumers don't know the five steps to washing their hands, and probably most people wouldn't admit that they don't know how to wash their hands, but it's really important to wet your hands, lather them. Uh, About 80% did not scrub for the 20 seconds that CDC recommends, and then rinsing the hands and then drying them on the paper towel. And really critical is after handling raw meat and poultry is to wash the hands before touching anything else in the kitchen. The study showed that the participants went and handled the raw turkey burgers, then they went over to season the turkey burgers with the salt and pepper and so they had their hands that had been touched the turkey uh, and then they went to the seasoning containers and and then contaminated those containers and it's just important to remember that those those pathogens then can live on the side of the spice containers for the next 33 hours so you have other unsuspecting family members that go then and touch something after you've touched it with your hands that have been contaminated again that was wet lather scrub for 20 seconds and then dry Oh, rinse, rinse and dry. So rinse, rinse and dry. Yeah. And then dry on a clean towel. So not dry on a towel that you've had sitting and has been there for a few days. We recommend drying on a paper towel, fresh paper towel, every time that you're throwing away uh, because you need to have a clean towel that you're drying your hands on. Uh, bacteria grow very quickly, both at warm temperatures and also in moist environments. And so if you have a towel that has been used consistently around the kitchen for either wiping down surfaces or, or w- also wiping hands, 
clothes before you've washed them, things like that, um, that can get to be a very dangerous breeding ground for bacteria. So we always say keep paper towels next to your sink, grab a paper towel, and then you're, you're wiping them off and you're throwing it away. Does it matter what kind of soap you use? Is antibacterial soap any better than regular? You know, I don't know that CDC has done a whole lot of evaluation in that area, um, although it's definitely something we're interested in as well. Uh, you, you might recall several years ago, many of the um, components in these soaps were are, were no longer permitted for mm-hmm. use um, mm-hmm. because of some concerns about, you know, creating resistance in humans to certain um, antibiotics. And so there are studies being done there, but I would say that we don't have a recommendation on what kind of soap to use. How common are foodborne illnesses and how serious are they more specifically? Well, food, foodborne illness is, is, is very common in that uh, one in six people each year is likely to come down with, with foodborne illness, um, and it leads to, you know, over 100,000 hospitalizations a year. So it's serious, it's very serious. Um, it's particularly difficult for children and for elderly or people who have compromised immune systems uh, because they have a more difficult time fighting the, the bacteria. And so, I, you know, I'm a m- mother of three children, and that's why hand washing is so important in our household, not only just to prevent foodborne illness, um, but also it's, uh, you know, it's the, it's the best way you can prevent yourself from any kind of disease um, or, or illness is by washing your hands. So it's so critical to do that, um, especially if you have folks in any of those categories in, in your home or who you're serving. Hey, Carmen, I, I just might add to the uh, number of people who have foodborne illnesses, 48 million a year, that's one in six, as you mentioned, 128,000 or so hospitalizations, 3,000 people die every year of foodborne illness. So that's what you right. say, I think, is, is, is really important. And you are convinced, or there's pretty good evidence that if people did as you recommend, it would significantly cut down on foodborne illnesses. Yes. You know, we have inspectors at the USDA. We have USDA inspectors in meat and poultry plants all around the country inspecting every single carcass for um, contamination to the carcass and also conducting sampling around the plant. Uh, when the product gets the USDA mark of inspection, it means that it is a safe product c- to consume, but meat and poultry must be cooked to proper internal temperatures in order to keep your family safe. And so when I say being cooked to proper internal temperatures, I also mean that if you have raw product around in your kitchen, any surfaces, the surfaces aren't getting cooked. So they have to be sanitized. They have to be washed. Um, cross-contamination is a big problem when we look at outbreaks. Um, people might be cooking their food, but they've used the same cutting board for their raw meat and poultry that they have for their fresh fruits and vegetables um, without sanitizing it in between. And these are just really critical steps that consumers need to take in their in their kitchens in order to keep themselves and their families safe. Oh, perfect. Great information. We've been talking on the telephone with Carmen Rottenberg, Deputy Undersecretary for Food Safety at the USDA about preventing foodborne illnesses. I think we now know some things we should be doing. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Ms. Rottenberg. Thank you. I got to go wash my hands. That's our program. (laughs) That's our program for this week.